Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm I'm Pittsburgh all day with all my lineups. If I can't okay. afford Minnesota, I'm Pittsburgh. Yeah, because you're, you're only you're, both, you're 300 off. You can't afford it. Okay, you yeah. If I can't sacrifice. afford them both, I'm not blinking and doing the double whammies with the um, Dallas. Um, I don't think Dallas is going to get enough points to make it worthwhile to start them both. Whereas mm. I think I think it's probably if I'm a betting man, which we are. I would bet both of them get similar between six to nine points each. Okay. So it's really not going to matter as much as I think the, you know, making sure you cover all your kickers. Sure. So with that so, being said, I'm a Pittsburgh guy in every lineup unless I can afford Minnesota. And if I can, I'd like to do both if I have the money. Okay. So I'm going to recap this lineup. We're going we're gonna to move on to the next Thursday all day stack. Uh, this lineup is Bradford, Le'Veon Bell, and Frank Gore. Antonio Brown, Des Bryant, Adam Thielen, Kyle Rudolph at tight end. Your kicker is Matt Prater, and your defense is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sounds good to me. And remember, it does. Four bars, four now, bars can fit in there with the same cost of kicker. But, uh, I keep repeating like myself over and over again about shooting your wad tomorrow. What I mean by that, to clarify, is let's go on to the next lineup. Yes. If you want, to, or you want to do another all day Thursday and just wrap through, we don't even need to discuss it. Just spit it out. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let me just make sure I plug this one into multiple contests. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do it. Uh, Got to make sure that we're gonna gonna spend the exact same amount of money on every lineup. You know, uh, what's your handle in Fanduel? Uh, the FanDuel handle is TL317. TL317. All right. If you see Ruckus5528 swinging out there tomorrow. I will. It'll be right behind me. <laughs> you know. All right. Let's say number two, I, I really like Kirk Cousins. I mean, he's just on fire. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. That's the reason why we didn't want to mess with the Dallas defenses or anything like that. Um, right. So I like him. I like uh, Le'Veon Bell. Frank Gore again, Antonio Brown, Adam Thielen, Pierre Garçon, Jordan Reed, Dustin Hopkins, and then the Colts. The Colts defense. Yeah, because yeah. you are actually that forces your hand with that lineup. Yeah, I, I didn't. Um, I think you can go um, a little cheaper if you really want to, but you can't. You can't use the Washington Redskins defense. Because I, I don't know if it's the same in DraftKings, but in FanDuel, you can only obviously start a maximum of four players from one team. That's right. So that makes it easy on me there. I don't have to worry about picking them. What I could do, obviously, is rotate in four bars again or Matt Prater with that lineup and then mm -hmm. not affect any of the other choices. Um, so just note that. Okay. Uh Read that one quickly back to me one last time, please. This is your Kirk Cousins stack. Yeah. I like okay. uh, Kirk Cousins, Le'Veon Bell, Frank Gore, Antonio Brown, Adam Thielen, Pierre Garçon, Jordan Reed, and it would be uh, Dustin Hopkins, a Kai Forbart, or a Matt Prater, considering okay. the cost of those three, with Pittsburgh. I see. Okay, you can get Pittsburgh in there at 43. Yeah, All right, I'm going to I'm going to throw out uh the Cowboys stack. Okay. And Let's this is what I came up with here. Uh Dak is Dak. He's put up some pretty incredible numbers, believe it or not. I I'm I'm as amazed as this kid as it gets, but last week again over 300 yards, uh three passing touchdowns. He will run the ball a little bit, but almost 26 fantasy points and and he was, you know, in the maybe upper middle of the pack. As far as value went, so I like Dak Prescott. Uh, you got to get Zeke and Bell in the same lineup somehow or another, and this is the one I was able to do it. So okay. Zeke and Le'Veon Bell at eighty six hundred and ninety five hundred, respectively. I mean that that's you got to get you got to get a big production day out of both of them for everything that you're paying for. And sure. then Des Bryant, I keep seeing this this injury uh, report. He's got some back issues. I think he's playing. I, I'm not overly concerned about it. I, I really do think he's playing. Until I hear otherwise, I have Dez in this lineup with Cole Beasley at 6,400. This is, this is your Cowboys stack here. So Prescott, Elliott, Bell, Dez now Bryant. Now let me ask you are, you, are you worried at all with uh, Dez Bryant being covered by Josh Norman? 
No, I have some reservations, but it, it looks like they didn't shut him down last time. Yeah, not in the slightest. Uh, uh, Dez, big, physical. Josh Norman's pretty good. Uh, and Norman has shut down some of the smaller, faster wide receivers, but the big physical guys, Dez, Dez is that guy. Uh, and I also, I, I'll tell you what, a good receiver, one way or the other, is eventually going to beat that that good corner. One day, he's going to beat him one way or the other. Uh, and I think if you're stacking it, you're, we're really rolling the dice with these lineups. So I'm almost disregarding matchup altogether. Yeah, I kind of agree. You you kind of have to at this point. Uh, yeah. You roll, you always roll with your studs. This is almost like a in your standard leagues how you look at your studs. It, it is. Good. It's almost like a standard playoff league where you have limited roster to choose from. You got to play them. You run them out there. Period. So Prescott, Elliott, and Bell in the backfield. Dez Bryant, Cole Beasley, and this is the this is my wild card here. Uh, my Charlie Day sound bite's not working, so I can't drop the wild card bomb on you. But Cordell Patterson, Cordero Patterson. Okay. I mean, look, he's a goose egg waiting to happen, and I know it. What I know. Cost? Say it again. What do you have for the cost on him? Fifty-two hundred. Fifty-two hundred. Now that that is that shows some promise because he's pretty much that is the, obviously the, the 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 floor that I would spend. I, I have my I think Garcon's at fifty-six. And he, to me, was the lowest I, I felt comfortable going, but that saves you another 400 bucks. Uh, who, who could you afford at your tight end, then? Could you get Reed in there? Uh, no, I could not. I got Kyle Rudolph. Okay, which, again, is a good pick. Yeah, so uh, you're still you're – still, I'm comfortable with any of the tight ends, really, uh, with Rudolph, with Reed. Look, Jordan Reed is, has the, every bit of potential to have a 12-catch, 155-yard, two-touchdown day. He also has every bit of potential to have a two-catch, 16-yard day. He does. So, and might I add, you know, if you really want to go with your big spenders and all your positions, and again, it just matters how you can work it, I think the wild card might be um, our man with uh, Vernon Davis. It's another It's another potential possibility. Um I'm trying to trying to limit that play because I was able to get Rudolph, who is a number one. You don't know. We don't know what Vernon Davis is going to be. No, Vernon is, Davis would be the equivalent of my Cordero Patterson right now. Yeah, it's just exactly. Roll well, the dice. And keep in mind, what we're trying to do is we we want one of these players to be a Cordell Patterson or a Vernon Davis. That's why I like. Um, even if I could afford it, I wouldn't stack all three of the best wide receivers. I wouldn't do a Brown. Let's say, let's say T.Y. Hilton is, uh, you know, let's say Andrew, Andrew Luck is sure. Yeah, I wouldn't start a Antonio Brown, Des Bryant, T.Y. Hilton. Because why? Because you're going to share the victory with 700 people, and instead of getting 25000 you're going to get $200. Yeah, maybe. you've got to find the wild card, and that's why I went within the Cord- Cordero Patterson direction. Now, last week, eight targets, four catches, 53 yards. He returned a kick for a touchdown. Um, this is the kind of guy that if Stephon Diggs doesn't play, then Cordero Patterson will step up in the passing game. Eight targets. Targets is something we always talk about. If you look and see targets, it's a good sign. It means he's maturing in an offense, especially this guy who wasn't brought along that well. Uh, Stephon Diggs being banged up. They're going to try to push the ball downfield or at least get it into his hands because Cordero Patterson's really explosive, really yeah. explosive. It's, we had this conversation earlier. The guy just, you know, obviously you pointed out, he doesn't know the offense well enough. But if they yeah. can get him the ball, he can make – he's probably the most explosive player on the field. He probably is. And, and so, so Cordell Patterson would be my wild card. So the recommendation overall is in these stacks, you're going to have to roll the dice and expect a goose egg out of somebody. But if you expect that goose egg and you get 50, 60 points out of Bell and Elliott, so does maybe 70% of the contest you're in. But you're in that 70. You're in that group. Then your wild card is the one who separates you. And if Cordell Patterson is the wild card or Cole Beasley is the wild card, Beasley's going to be pretty highly owned. Uh, I really think he will. Uh, he, he sees too many targets, to, and he's, he's costed too economically to, to not get it. But I finished up this lineup with Kai Forbath and, uh, and the Steelers' defense because that seems to be the back end of this if you're going to plug anybody in. So that's my Cowboy stack. Nice. I like it. I'm going to change one of mine. I have uh, the spirit. <laughs> Pat Rob Kelly in, in some of mine, and okay. uh, I'm going to change it. I have... I, I went with the uh, – my Cowboy stack is Prescott, Bell, Kelly, Brown, Bryant, Garcon, and Witten. 
Um, and then I finished with Iowa so poor I had to go to the Indianapolis Colts, and then I went with different kickers you know, um, all the way around. And this is a week that every defense could score six, six points. Yeah, yeah, and, and I almost expect that versus the opposite. Yeah. But, but I think really, I think Minnesota is going to come with a chip, and they played well last week to where I, I think the only thing I don't like about that is the fact that they're going to Detroit so that there's my reservation with that, but you it, know, what can you do? I get it. Don't be surprised if the Detroit Lions return a kick. Oh, you think so? Yeah, don't be surprised. I won't be surprised if 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 there's a special teams touchdown in that game in particular. I I, I just uh, oh, man. there's explosive no, players on all that, but but again, you can't make room for a defense. No, you can, and 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 if you, you only when you have the the time to cover the, the, the spots do you even look to try to go for more but That's it. again we'll, we'll make 500 lineups that we're going to try to fit every potential idea that you have in your head yeah. come to fruition so these what we're really trying to do is break down the, the surest things the, the smartest plays given and the, the challenges that we have with this week but that's right and, and we're you tell me that Detroit running one back because now it's in the back of my head. You no, it me. is, and it's, it's just something that's got to be thrown on the table. But don't be surprised if a guy like a Josh Ferguson steals a touchdown or takes a dump off for 35 yards and scores. I mean, these are things that can happen. At the end of the day tomorrow when I'm sitting with a fat belly full of turkey and broccoli cheddar uh, casserole and I look up and I, I watch a guy like a, a Josh Ferguson crack a screen pass for 40 yards and a touchdown, I'm going to go, yep, should have plugged him in someplace. And that's where, in DraftKings, I really enjoy that flex position, especially in a weekend like that. So I am going to do some DraftKings lineups as well. Uh, okay. But let's move forward to, uh, and this is the toughest play of it all, is to do anything that would be an Indianapolis Colts stack. So really what you're doing is buying space. You're making cap space with a temporary fix that is Scott Tolzien. Uh, about that. Again, again, I don't like Tolson in the all-day um, stacks for the all-day games because I just don't like the the dynamic. We talked about this earlier as well. I don't like the dynamic of bringing in the other wide receivers, but then when at the different prices, it starts to make the combinations really difficult. One to piece together the puzzle, you start to see too many choices. There's the Golden Tates that are lying around there that will get in your way when it was easier, when it was Pierre Garçon or no one, you know. So if we're going to do the Scott Tolson, I like him late Thursday only. I'm going to start him. And believe it or not, I'm not stacking him. I don't feel comfortable with uh, yeah. I I wouldn't stack his ass either. Yeah. I don't I don't feel comfortable with overall the production that the potential that either one of the wide receivers Hilton or uh, Moncrief was going to give me only because I think they're going to be outperformed by Antonio Brown and Des Bryant and, and and then I don't have I can't afford them for the third spot so why would I take a chance like I said in order for Tolson to give me something that could win he just needs like 15 points that could be a screen pass to Gore which I expect. Sure. So then he's going to throw one, one more touchdown. Maybe he'll run for 30 or 40 yards, and there's the points we need. Well, that's not enough production for the wide receiver spot from that quarterback. So in, by using him at $5,000, I then can put in Brown and Bryant in a lineup with Jordan Reed. So here's my Tolson stack, which are my, not my stack, but my lineup, is Tolson, Bell, Gore, because there is my, I guess, my stacking, if you will. Sure. In sense. Then I got Brown, Des Bryant, uh, Deshaun Jackson, and Jordan Reed. Or you can go with Pierre Garçon, and I, I encourage you to do both. Um, okay. So Jackson or Garçon with Jordan Reed, then Hopkins, then Pittsburgh. And I'm pretty broke. Um, I have 300 bucks left if I go Garçon instead of Jackson. And so then that allows me to go through a few of the other kickers if I have them, if, if I want to spend that money. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. I'm, I'm processing, um, which... You can afford every kicker, basically, so you kind of have to do that. If you start Pierre Garçon, 
then you you know you can afford the Baileys, the Vinatieri's. So the one more time, give me the Tolzien stack. Okay, Tolzien stack mine, is 